Okay, honestly, I need everyone to listen the fuck up this episode. I might have just shed a few tears. It's okay. I'm also recording this on my fucking phone. I don't have a microphone because I'm currently in LA, the city of devils. Um, Welcome back to another episode. This episode is going to be all over the place and it's going to get more fun and happy because I'm going to tell you guys stories about why the fuck I'm here and what the fuck I'm doing and what happened leading up to it because it was a shit show, but... I'm like freaking out right now and this is literally therapy to me so I'm just gonna fucking talk to you guys. Basically I had the best morning. I had such a good guest on the podcast. I was so fucking nervous and I'm like "Ah, this is not planned out at all. So I'm in LA because I'm having guests on my podcast. Anyways that happened this morning and it was so good. I was so fucking scared because I'm like everything I do online is kind of just me and like I'll get people in it if they're around but like I never plan stuff out with people I feel like and obviously a podcast if you're gonna have a podcast guest on like it's planned out in some sort of way we were in a studio I was so fucking nervous it was like my first time ever doing something like that and it genuinely could not have gone better like the person that you'll see next week who I had on but um It was like so good and we just talked so much because we do similar stuff and it was like so good for me because a lot of things that I worry about, stress about and whatever, seeing this girl have like the same struggles and overthinking like topics made me feel so much better and like I honestly felt like we were helping each other. We literally went to lunch after and just being like, you shouldn't overthink like all like when there's hate you shouldn't worry about the hate like blah blah blah. it was just so fucking good I was so happy and I swear to god I fucking like jinxed myself because I get back to the house I'm staying at and I go on TikTok and I see this girl who posted a video and nothing wrong with this girl posting a video everyone has an absolute right to an opinion and I don't think she meant it in a bad way so like if you are this girl please do not think that I was like upset with you because I was not She posted a video on TikTok and it was saying like there's no worse feeling than seeing than hearing Sadie make these voices in videos and watching her humor change something along those lines and I saw it I went away from it didn't even look at the comments because I try not to like draw attention to something that's like negative and then I started thinking about it and I'm like wait okay she's actually not really being negative she's just like voicing her opinion and this is my biggest fear doing this doing social media because obviously my life has changed so fucking much since from being a 16 year old in high school who all of a sudden just had this massive group of people handed to them who are then watching them online versus me now 19 years old I'll turn 20 this year All of my friends are in college. I didn't go to school. I'm on a completely different life path. My family's growing up. Like, Cooper is getting older. He doesn't want to be in the fucking videos. Fuck, he doesn't even want to be in the same room with me. Yeah, it's sad. I love Cooper. He's my little brother. But he's fucking growing up, okay? It's a normal thing in life. We all fucking grow up. And I already question my life so much. Not my life. I love living. Don't want to die. I already question like where I'm at in life, where I'm going in life so much. Fuck this whole like relationship thing I brought up online. It's such a fucking like train wreck with me talking about it because I I overthink everything because I put YouTube and like social media and what I do first because other than God and my family, that's the most important thing in my life to me. Like that's what I love. That's what makes me happy. But the video I like stitched the video on TikTok and was like guys like help me the fuck out like let me know how you feel I don't want to change like that makes me so sad and if she's talking about like my content changing just because I have a different life now I get it but like I don't want people to ever think I let like the quote-unquote industry change me because I see that happen to people and it's really fucking sad And I'm someone that's like, I will never let that happen. For fucking example, I've never moved out to LA. Like I could have literally done that. And the reason that I didn't is because I think that I would have changed a lot too. I don't think I would be happy. And like, 
I don't know. It's just so hard because I get what people are saying. I get why they're saying it in a way like, yes, obviously things have changed. But I'm like, okay, I moved to Florida. And a lot of people probably don't know this because it's like old videos. But I moved to Florida with my family when I graduated high school. They live in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. Like I've tried to make friends there. I'm friendly with everybody. But I don't like living at home. I'm 19, about to be 20, and I don't want to live at home, especially while all my other friends don't live at home. Like, it just, I love being home, but I don't want to be there full time. I'm not happy. I tried to do it for a while, and I was absolutely faking my fucking life online. Like, I literally made a whole glow up video, and at the very end of the video, it was the most dramatic shit ever, but I had a fucking mental breakdown because I literally was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I am faking these videos for you guys like I don't fucking like making these videos like I'm literally just doing this so I can finish it put it out so I did it and then I'm fucking leaving and I'm going to hang out with my friends like I don't want to do this that's where I was at now I make videos that I actually like enjoy like if I'm vlogging it's because I want to be vlogging it's not because I feel like I just have to vlog and I'm so happy I'm in that position because Honestly, when I first moved to Florida with my family, I didn't think I was ever going to be back in that position. I was like, damn, my fucking passion for this shit went out the window. So it's like I pick up my camera and I vlog and I get on my computer and I edit them. I'll never let anyone else edit my videos. I never have. I never will. I think that's a big thing that when I've watched people, when they get editors, I feel like it changes their videos. And that's something that I'm like, I will never let that happen because I want it to be me and I want it to be real. And I've stuck with that, even though I'm honestly not a fan of editing anymore, but I know that I would be like, my content wouldn't stay true to myself if I didn't edit it. So I keep editing the videos. I don't know. This probably sounds like I'm being so fucking dramatic. And like, it's so crazy because literally this morning I had an hour long conversation with the guest of next week about like how we shouldn't overthink this shit and like, whatever. And like, I don't know. It's just so hard because then I come home and I see something like that and I'm like, fuck. And I want to bring attention to it and talk about it because I like want you guys to know that 16 year old me started doing this because I loved it and I wanted to be someone that I wanted to be someone for somebody else. I wanted to be able for someone to come on there, watch my videos and be like, oh my God, like, this is making me one laugh or this is making me like happy. That's always great. But then also having people being like, holy shit, I like really can relate to this girl. I always want to be relatable to you guys because I feel like, especially now with social media, a lot of people aren't fucking relatable and they don't make it relatable, which is fine. But it's something that for me, I always was like, If I fucking like am having a shitty day, I'm going to tell people I'm having a shitty day. If I'm having a good day, I'm going to tell people I'm having a good day. I never want to fake anything. And I don't fucking know. I don't even know. It's just so hard. Like I'm just trying to stay real, stay myself and also enjoy it. Because here's the thing. Someone could come to me and be like, hey, We know how to make you so big on YouTube. Do X, Y, and Z and blah, blah, blah. It's obviously not going to be the videos you make now, but if you do this, like you'll blow up really quickly. And I would go tell him to suck a fucking cock. Like, I don't fucking care. I'm never going to lie online and be fake. Like, I'm just not going to do it. And so I just want, I guess you guys to know that. I'm just trying to keep my happiness. That way I can be real online and still post consistently and not feel like I'm living a lie. So yeah (laughs) that's not what this whole episode is going to be about but um I just wanted to talk about that and get it out of the way anyways I'm currently I'm actually scared right now because I'm not in my house I'm actually okay I'm at my boyfriend's house but um he's not here right now I literally I'm such a fucking paranoid person that I feel like when no one is around someone is around like not some like creepo that's gonna come murder me yes that but like also just someone that like I know is like here and like I just don't know it and they're just like listening to me and I sound like a fucking psychopath anyways came out here because I was having a few people on the podcast which has so far been so fun and so great I'm so excited for you guys to like listen to them and watch them um and so before I came out here let me let's shed a little light on this situation so 
I'm probably about to get my period. I'm super emotional at the moment. But it was, I flew out here Saturday morning. So it was Friday and my grandpa was in town. I took my grandpa to lunch. Love him. Hadn't seen him in a while. It was really cool. Then I went to get my motherfucking nails done, okay? Well, it's pouring damn rain where my parents live. And that's where I was before I came out here. And like I said, they live in the middle of actually ass fuck nowhere. So it's like a 40 minute drive to like the fucking nail salon if I want to go. So I go to the nail salon that I always fucking go to. My dude's not there. This, you're probably like, Sadie, what the fuck are you talking about? But trust me, like this has a good um, message to it. My normal nail guy wasn't there. So I was passed off to this girl. Well, from the motherfucking get go, this girl was not nice. I always get French tips on my nails, which is actually really funny because I feel like it's like kind of a classier thing to do. And I'm just not classy, I feel like, at all. But um, she, like, was telling me that she couldn't do it. Like, she she started doing it away, and I knew I wasn't going to like it. And I was like, oh, no, 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 can you do it this way, please? And she was like, no, that's, like, impossible. We can't do that. And I was like, I literally come here, like, every four weeks, and um, Kevin does that for me. So, like, what are you talking about? And she was just, like, kind of a bitch the whole time. Like, I'm not trying to be rude, but she was, like, maybe having a bad day or something and just fucking mean. And so I literally fucking left the appointment because I was like, fuck this. Like, I was so annoyed. And I called this other place. Like I said, 40 minutes from my house. I was wanting to get home before it was dark out so I could, like, pack up my bags and shit, whatever. So I drive to this other nail salon. And I go in there and I, like, show my nails. I'm like, this is what I normally get and I was supposed to get, but whatever. Let me just say, these people were so fucking nice. I forget the girl's name, but the dude's name was Simon. And they honestly, like, made my day so much better. I was talking to them about, like, my issues. I was talking about my problems. I was telling them I was nervous to come to LA because I had to do a podcast. And I was scared it wasn't going to go well. These motherfuckers calmed me down. They made me feel better. Like, they were so fucking nice. So, just, like, I honestly am glad that my nails turned out to be, like, shit. So, then I went to this other place and met these really nice people. Because I was just, like, damn, like god's plan like literally i was so mad before and i was like what the fuck why would this happen like this is my luck and then i go there and it's so great and it's just little things like that that i'm like okay i wasn't planning on spending fucking four hours at the nail salon today but like i'm glad i did because i just met some dope ass people and yeah anyways then i went home started packing out my bags packing for me is like the hardest task in the world i don't know why i try and outfit plan because if i don't i will literally have no idea what to wear and just wear sweatshirts every day wherever i'm going so it took me about four fucking hours to do that. By the time I was done, it was like 1.30 in the morning. Well, my flight, I was flying American and my flight was at like 7.26 in the morning. And I was like, okay, bet. So it's 2 a.m. I was like, I'm not going to fucking sleep because I will not wake up. So I'm staying up all night. I went over to my little desk in my corner, started fucking editing the YouTube video that maybe came out yesterday. Started editing, literally edited all night. So I was like, okay, there's no way I'm going to miss this flight. Like, I'm going to be up in time. Uh, no, yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. So we leave my house around 6. I get to the airport around like 7. By the way, three girls immediately when I walked in the airport were like, Sadie, and they were so cute and sweet. So if you guys were them, I love you. Um... This guy's like, yo, you have two minutes to like check that bag or else you're not going to make the flight. And I'm like, okay, bet. So he starts checking my bag. Also, this airport that I'm at, it's fucking tiny, like, and no one's there. And he's like, oh, you're two minutes past cutoff time. Like, we can't do it. You need to go get in this line. And I'm like, okay, like, are you sure there's no way you can just like put it on the fucking whatever the fuck treadmill thing behind you and like just let it go? And he's like, no, I'm sorry. Like, you need to go get in that line. And I'm like, okay, like, what the fuck? I'm probably just going to go get in this line and then they're going to, like, let me on the flight. I don't know. So I walk over to this other line. Well, everyone was in this fucking line because everyone's bags were late. And so literally I'm in this tiny ass airport. I still have, like, fucking 30 minutes to get to my flight. I don't even know. And they're like, you could make the flight, but your bag can't make the flight. And I literally wanted to be like, I can walk through the doors behind you and go put my bag in the airplane. Like, that's how much fucking time we had. And this airport is so tiny and no one's there. But I was like, okay, that's fine. Then they were asking me if I wanted to be on standby for the next three flights that day. And I'm just standing there and I'm like, not fucking really. Like, that would kind of suck. I don't want to get, like, sit here all day and then knock it on a flight. So then I literally had to just cancel the flight, walk three feet over to the Delta people. Like I said, no one's fucking in this airport. Walk three (laughs) feet over to the Delta people and I'm like, hey, like, do you have any flights that I can get on? They're like, yeah, sure. Like, one leaves here in 45 minutes. We got you. And I'm like, how? Like, what the fuck? But that happened. Then I got to LA. Nick, he works with me on a lot of, like, business stuff and honestly is the best fucking person ever. Nick picked me up from the airport in his fucking truck 
pop off Nick. Didn't know you had one of those. Honestly, like Slay, it was pretty cool. Picked me up. We went and got Chick fil A. We were chilling. It was our first time meeting. It was so dope. Love him. Loved it. Then I came back to my BFs. Um, <laughs> I hate saying that. Um, and I fixed myself up and then I went to this little like thing I don't even know some guy was like rapping at this place last night and me and Nick went it was cool um sorry to people who don't want to hear about this because you think I've changed but I did find cigarettes on the floor of the bathroom scored that (laughs) just kidding I'm not gonna be mean about it but no for okay like I don't know like that's my life like yeah what am I supposed to say like not say that like that last night that was like my big score of last night I found fucking a box of cigs on the bathroom floor and I was like holy shit this is fucking dope um but see like now I feel like if I say that people think I'm like trying to fit into this like category of like drinking and partying and it's like no like I've literally been fucking partying since I was 16 years old I just never showed it online (laughs) me like getting so angry but went out last night met some cool people it was fun Came back here, went to bed, literally woke myself up at fucking six in the morning. I made myself get up at six. I had to be at the podcast studio place at like 10 30 a.m. And I literally made myself up get up at six because I was like, if I am hung over at all, I'm gonna be so fucking pissed off. Literally woke up at six, had dads. You don't know what dads are, days after drinking shits. Um, had that this morning. That was great. Not being in my own house. Um, chugged some water, chugged a venti ice black coffee, went in the bathroom, got ready, went downstairs. Literally, Nick was here to pick me up, guys. And I was like so proud of myself. I was like, damn, I really got up and like got ready and was just like ready all morning and being productive. Literally, he's like, here, I pick up my shit and my fucking coffee that I pick up drops, spills all fucking over me and the floor. I still am in the shirt. So I still smell like um, a cold brew, which is honestly, it smells kind of good. They should make like fucking perfume of coffee, but spill coffee all over me, have to change. We wound up going to the wrong fucking location of the podcast studio. And then we went to the right one. I met up with next week's guests and then we went to lunch. Like I said, then I came back here, saw that TikTok fucking almost drowned myself in the pool. I'm kidding. I would never do that, but no, it honestly, it's a mind fuck. It fucks with me because I'm like, this is my life. This is what I love. This is what I want to do. You guys are a big part of my life. And it's so important to me. Like I genuinely, when I'm thinking about anything changing in my life, I'm thinking like, how are they going to react? How are they going to like that? Is that going to be good? Is that going to be bad? And like, I know some people are going to be like, no, 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 don't do that. But no, I should like, this is my life. And like, you guys support me. You guys are the reason that I'm able to do what I do. I want you guys to enjoy it. I don't want you guys to think I'm changing. I don't want to dip out on you guys, change, and have a whole new audience. Like, what the fuck? No. So it does bother me. It gets in my head. And I just want to, like, be better, I guess. Like, I just want to, like, I don't know. I hate even saying that because I feel like I do try, like, my best to stay. I'm just being myself is the thing that, like, is hard. Like, I'm really just being myself. And I feel like that's what got me here in the first place. So I shouldn't try and, like, force things out of me now to, like, make some people happy. I don't know. It's just, like, yeah. When I was 16 in high school making videos, I'm 19, almost 20 now. And I don't want to make the same videos I was making then. And, like, quite honestly, I tried to. And I feel really fucking lonely. Like, it's, like, everyone in my life grew up and is growing up so like trying to keep myself in the bubble of like making I don't even know what the fucking videos I used to make like the drive with me's are always so fun and I love them but I have to respect the fact that Cooper doesn't want to be in videos anymore and like you know what I will say I felt like it was starting to kind of like not affect my relationship with my family but yeah in a way it was kind of like okay do we actually want to hang out or are we just doing this because it's a good YouTube video I'm trying to like honestly go through like fucking videos that are older and like i just know there's some that's like i'm faking it like i'm not happy okay starbucks versus duncan fall menu items like i used to do videos like that i actually found those like fun but i found them fun because cooper was with me and it's like if cooper doesn't want to do that i don't really want to go do that alone omegle videos like i literally did an omegle video not too long ago and i felt like it felt like i was back in my little room back in georgia doing them the whole like asking people questions they're afraid to ask those were like fun but it's like you can only do so many i would do these videos where i would be like 
would have Cooper in the car with me and he would ask me like, what's your body count? Do you vape? And it's like, I'm so past that. Like I'm like, at the time it made sense. I was 16 and it was like, oh, it was fun to have like my little brother asking me these questions or like I would ask Cooper like, oh, have you kissed a girl? And like, it was fun. I've matured now. I wouldn't like find that even with my mom. It's like me and my mom are so close now and she tells me a lot more than she did three fucking years ago. And I tell her a lot more than I did three years ago. So it's like, I still like doing videos with her, but it's just not, it's obviously not going to be the exact same. I don't know. It's just, I'm older. Like I've just gotten fucking older. I don't want to sound like a fucking broken record, but yeah. Anyways, this episode's not over. I was so excited about this week's episode because I was going to make it into like a vlog. Like I was going to start off the night before I was leaving for the airport, say like my plan for LA, say how I was scared, whatever, talk about it all. And then film a little bit of my podcast at the airport and then film when Nick like picked me up, not film, but like record it on my phone and like add them all together. I haven't really been doing that because I honestly am now just realizing that I haven't remembered to do it, but I thought that'd be so fun. Actually, here's me at the airport yesterday. Hello, you little dirty sluts. No, I'm kidding. I'm coming to you live from the airport off of my cellular. (laughs) Um, Let's just say I'm ready to throw fucking hands, okay? Shelly, down at American Airlines, go get fucked by a small little dick. I'm kidding, that's really mean. Everyone has been nice this morning after the fact I missed my flight, which I'm sure I'm already ranting you guys about. I got some Chick-fil-A. I haven't slept since... (laughs) 8 like a.m yesterday um we're doing good we're not no one was in this fucking airport and it was a vibe and i was ready to go fuck around with everything now about everyone's in this bitch so i'm just gonna keep munching on my chick-fil-a and then probably take a fucking nap love y'all yeah when i was at the airport waiting to get on my flight in the morning after i had missed my first fucking flight i literally fell asleep in the airport y'all i was on the phone with brinley that's mckinley's older sister mckinley used to be in a lot of my videos they're like my best friends. I love them. I was on the phone with Brinley and literally guys fell asleep in this fucking airport. And I woke up to Brinley going, Sadie, Sadie over the phone. And I was fucking stomping my feet, like kicking them because in my dream, I was running downstairs to find Cooper. And I was literally woke up stomping on the chair. This old fucking man was looking at me. I was like, God dog, but fell asleep in the fucking airport. I was a delusional mess. I slept the whole plane ride, which was so fucking nice just woke up from my nap on my first flight i'm currently in atlanta aka hotlanta aka hell on earth part two um shit lana is what i like to call it i better get on my next flight i really have to pee but i do not feel like walking my fucking legs over to the bathroom see you guys in la goodbye i don't think i really talked to you guys at all after that with that being said though I'm going to talk to you guys probably later because I think I'm going to have some drinks in me because I'm having a Zoom call with a few of my friends and we're drinking (laughs) because I miss them. But I'll talk to you guys later and we'll see where the fuck this goes. Okay, I'm literally going off of this so randomly and I feel so weird filming this on my phone. It doesn't even feel like a real podcast episode, but it's the next day. I had a lot to think about. Uh, It's actually two days later maybe yeah yeah it is two days later so i that day tried to just calm the fuck down turn off my phone which i honestly can't do because this self tan's about to come out and i have to be on my phone um but i tried to just like calm down not really think about anything and go to bed that night well i couldn't sleep at all that night and so i did some deep fucking diving on my youtube channel I went, I was watching all my old videos and I was like, I need to get my fucking sauce back. Like what the fuck happened? And here's what I fucking realized. I watched my, I watched a bunch of videos and then I watched my moving out video, which if you haven't seen it on YouTube, go watch it. The video where I move out. Um, it's so sad. I like don't cry at it anymore, but like, I remember I could not watch that video for like at least a year after making it because I would just ball my eyes out every time. And so... I watched that video and I was like, okay, I was so sad for a reason. That was the day where like my life got fucking real. Like it was like, I'm older now. Like I graduated high school. Like this is like, I'm in the real world now a little bit. And I was so sad because it's like, I felt like I left kid me 
back in like Georgia in my childhood home. So I don't know. That's that. Anyways, I woke up yesterday and I had to get on like a meeting and then I was trying to get all the self-tan stuff together. I was literally disgusting, like sitting down on my computer, finishing editing up a video and um, just like gross, like just sitting around all day. Gross. Well, then so <laughs> I'm just going to explain this because it's funny. So obviously I said I'm staying at my boyfriend's house right now. Well, he wasn't here. Like when I got here, he wasn't here. And so, you know, yesterday I had planned out, okay, finish the video, then finish the podcast episode, upload the video, and then hopefully edit the podcast, upload the podcast. I know it's going to be posted a little bit late, but like whatever. Well, if you follow the What's That Team on my Instagram, you probably already know what I'm going to say. I'm literally sitting here editing and <laughs> this fucker was having to like kind of drive near LA because he was going from one spot to another spot for like what he does. And he was like, this is so annoying. I'm going to be going like right by LA, right by my house, like where you are. I want to stop. And I'm like, oh, lol, cool. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but you know, like I'm such a control freak and a little planner that like I already know, like I already have my podcast planned out for later tonight. Like, no, if he was to come here right now, I would literally not get anything done. Well, this motherfucker is like, yeah, I'm going to be so close. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute are you fucking coming here? And then like, I don't fucking track him on anything. I have no fucking idea. And I'm sitting here so fucking gross. Like literally it, the heat upstairs is like broken. It was blasting. I was sweating my dick off. Literally like my hair was a mess. I was just like so gross. And I was like, no fucking way. He's about to come here right now. And you guys know, like we do fucking long distance. Like I never really see him. So I'm like, great. I haven't seen him in like three weeks. He's going to see me. I'm going to look like fucking shit. And I'm like freaking out I'm like where the fuck are you what's going on blah blah blah. so I like hop in the shower I'm like cleaning myself the fuck up I'm like holy shit you something I'm literally the most disgusting animal to live um and then I couldn't figure out if he was coming or not and then finally I'm such a fucking raging bitch that I made him share his snapchat location with me because I wanted to see where he was thank god he was like two hours away and I was able to like clean myself up a little bit but um did that i was trying to finish my video because i knew the second he got here i wasn't gonna want to like sit down and edit then he came and he surprised me which was super sweet um so shout out you if you're listening to this even though i know you're not maybe you are by the way he's like in the last youtube video so go check her out um but that was really nice i did not sleep at all last night because i was thinking about this i was thinking about youtube the podcast the self tans about to come out right now um, I'm gonna edit this podcast and get it out for you guys literally right now and self tan comes out tomorrow. I'm literally so excited. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna try and whip up a vlog while I'm here in LA, even though it's fucking raining and I have no idea what to video, but it's fine. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm so excited for you guys to see next week's episode, by the way, the special guests we have. It's like literally a dream come true to me. Like I was so happy. So get ready. I love y'all. Peace out.